This tutorial will demonstrate how to use SPSS to request and create frequency distribution tables as well as frequency distribution graphs and also to calculate measures of central tendency including mean, median, and mode and standard deviation. So again we have uh, several types of uh, data collected here in this in this file. We're going to just choose we're actually going to choose two uh, data columns, two variables that we wish to analyze. So we're going to go to the Analyze menu first of all. Go to Descriptive Statistics and then choose Frequencies. So again we have the choice of choosing uh, several variables simultaneously in which we want to analyze. So this time we're going to go ahead and analyze um, BMI as one variable and a numeric outcome variable, BMI. And we're also going to measure um, systolic blood pressure, another quantitative variable. Now you'll notice down here in the lower left, um, this is automatic, this is a default in SPSS. This will automatically develop or display frequency distribution tables. So it will list all of the individual scores collected for the two variables and then indicate how frequently each score occurred and it will also develop a percentile rank for each individual score in the distribution. So that's one aspect that we'll get from this analysis. Then we go to the statistics menu and now we can choose other um, statistics to have generated. We can ask for the scores associated with the quartiles as far as percentile rank is in is concerned and that's the 25th, 50th, 75th, and 100th percentile. If we wanted to look for individual percentile ranks or certain percentile ranks for one reason or other, we can request that here. So for example, if I wanted to look at the um, 80th percentile, um, the score associated with the 80th percentile rank, I would enter in 80 and then add it and you can see I've already requested the 65th percentile score to be calculated as well. We can ask for the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. We can ask for a skewness score if we wish to double check the uh, data for skewness to determine if it's normally distributed or not. And then we can ask for the standard deviation for each variable. We can ask for other aspects as well, the range, the minimum, the maximum score, and so on. Okay. Once we've selected all the options we're interested in, we can click continue. And then we can go to charts and we can actually have SPSS generate some uh, histograms for us if we choose or pie charts or bar, chart, bar charts depending on what we're interested in. If you choose histograms what's nice is we can also ask SPSS to superimpose a normal curve over the histogram so we can try and visualize um, what type of distribution we have. Is it normal? Is it skewed? And also possibly what direction the skewness is occurring. So that again is another option that we have that we could also then use to report our data. We can uh, cut or copy and paste these histograms and paste them into a Word document or some other document so that we can then uh, report these uh, sorts of data. Okay. Once we've selected what we're interested in, we click Continue. And then we click OK. So as this output file generates, the first uh, box we can look at is the basic statistics. So here we see the, num the number of scores in each of the variables. So BMI had 4,415. Systolic blood pressure had 4,434. And you can see here this also will indicate if we have any missing data. So it appears there are 19 subjects in the data file that are missing a BMI score. But all subjects in the data file have a systolic blood pressure score. We have the mean, uh, median, and mode for each of the two variables. We have our standard deviation for each of the two. We have our skewness statistic for each of these two. And again, if we're using the rule of one, we would say that the BMI data is not skewed. Um, we would say the systolic blood pressure data is skewed. If we're going to double 
use the, the method to double the standard air of skewness, which is probably the most common technique we're going to use, we would see that uh, these two numbers both exceed um, the 0 .037 doubled. So we would indicate in this case, um, a little bit more conservatively, we would say that these two, both these data sets, both these variables um, have a skew, and they're both positively skewed because their skewness scores are both positive. We can also see the percentiles for each of the sets of scores. So the score at the 50th percentile for BMI is 25.45. The 65th percentile score is 26.87 and so on. Okay, then we can go to the frequency table. And again, here are each of the individual scores and the frequency of their occurrence. So as we see a score of 17.61, that happened twice. Um, and we can move down the table and we can look at all of the particular individual scores. So if we're interested in a particular score, maybe the cutoff between normal weight and overweight, we can figure out how many people fall above or below that cutoff. And we can also see here in the right hand column the percentile rank for each of these individual scores. And we're going to see very small deviations from score to score because we have very small differences from score to score. So we'd have to go through quite a few scores to even find the score that falls at the fifth percentile. Okay, and then we can see the same thing for systolic blood pressure. So if we select from the menu over here on the left-hand side, we can move pretty easily between the different uh, features of the output without having to scroll up and down. So again, if I want to see BMI, I can click on BMI. It takes me right to the top of that table. Systolic blood pressure takes me to the top of that table. And again, I can see the same thing. Systolic blood pressure of 96, for example, uh, happens 12 times. Okay, now the next thing we can look at are the histograms. So we can click on the BMI histogram. So here is that histogram. And we can see superimposed over it is that normal bell curve. Okay, and we can see that we do have some deviation from normal. There is some skewness here in the BMI. Um, not a lot, as we saw with the skewness score. Um, but there is definitely some skewness there. And then we can see the same thing with systolic blood pressure. There's an even more pronounced skewness here, the same type of skew, a positive skew. Again, here's our normal bell curve superimposed over the histogram, and then we can see that there's definitely some higher peaks to the left of the normal bell curve, indicating again a positive skew. Okay, so that concludes the tutorial on how to perform basic descriptive techniques using your data. Remember, the things we're mainly looking for when we're doing these sorts of techniques, we're going to produce some sort of a frequency table or, and or a histogram or a pie chart or a bar graph. We can also have it indicate percentile ranks of scores for us. We can determine the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. We can determine variance, the standard deviation, and we can also have the skewness score reported.